Hello, my friends. This is Teacher Stefan with another close reading. Snails. The snail is very small. It has a hard shell, but a soft body. It has one big foot. Hmm. The snail also has mucus. Ech. The mucus helps the snail slide on its big foot. Pretty gross. The snail moves very slowly. Okay, our opening paragraph is describing the anatomy of a snail, what the snail's body is like and how it moves, its physiology. The hard shell that you can see here, which is rather beautiful, protects the soft body of the snail. The shell grows bigger as the snail gets older. The shell looks like a swirl, which is actually a very interesting shape, a beautiful and complicated shape. The snail eats leaves. It also eats moss and dirt. This can help the plants and it helps the soil. So even though snails may be gross, disgusting, if you see one in your garden, please leave it alone. It is making your garden healthier and more beautiful. But snails make a tasty treat for other animals. Birds, bugs, and toads eat snails. And even people eat snails. In fact, it is a very fancy and expensive meal. Escargot is the French word for snail. And it's cooked in a creamy white sauce and is delicious. How many feet does a snail have? Mm, two, zero, one large foot. Why does a snail need a shell? To look cool? Well, the opening sentence of paragraph two teaches us that it protects its soft body. What do snails eat? Snails eat leaves, moss, and dirt. Yuck. Write the antonyms for the following words. A synonym is the same. So if you said the color of the wall is white or eggshell, those are synonyms because they're both white. But if you picked white or black, those are more antonyms because they are opposites. So we want big and small. Hard and soft. Fast. Tortoise and the hare, slow. Young and old. There we go. Do you like snails? Why or why not? I like snails because they keep the garden beautiful and they are delicious when cooked. I hate snails because mucus grosses me out. <coughs> A treat for Alice. Alice was at school. Class was over, and now it was time to go home. Alice hopped from foot to foot. She watched the car line. She could not wait to go. Hmm. Mommy had said that today Alice would get a treat. What could it be? A new toy? An ice cream cone? A fun trip? Hmm. From first, Alice saw a red car. But Mommy did not drive a red car. Next, Alice saw a blue car. But Mommy did not drive a blue car. The third car Alice saw was white. This story is building suspense. 
right? It starts at the end of the day. Alice is excited. There's a treat, but she must wait for her mom. But where is her mom? Not in the first car, not in the second car. But Alice saw a white car and mommy drove a white car. But mommy was not alone. Grandma sat beside her. Grandma had come to visit and that was the best kind of treat. Because grandparents are always lovely. They are always nice and they always have candy. So who is this story about? It's about Alice and a surprise visit from grandma. There is a black car in the story. Yes or no? False. Red, blue, and white. Alice saw three cars. What color are they? I just said it. Can you remember? There were three cars of red, blue, and white. Oh, America. <laughs> Why is Alice excited? She is excited because mommy had said there was a treat. She had promised a very special treat, but Alice doesn't know what it is. In the end, what was Alice's special treat? Ice cream, a fun trip, a new toy, a surprise special visit from grandma. And of course our answer is D, grandma. Animals in the sky. Anita sat on the grass, staring up. What are you doing? Katie asked. I am watching the duck, Anita said. Katie looked up. She did not see any duck. Now I see a pig, Anita said. Katie did not see any pig. Are there ducks and pigs in the sky? Use your imagination. Anna pointed, and there is a lion. Katie frowned. She did not see a lion. And then the sun came out from behind a long cloud. Katie smiled. I do not see a lion, a pig, or a duck, she said. But I do see a shark. Katie pointed at the long cloud, right? Because sharks are long. They have long tails, a long back, and a long nose. You are right, Anita cried. It does look like a shark. Katie and Anita watched the clouds move and make new animals. And that's the end of our story. Which animal would you like the girls to see next? How about an armadillo. Which of the animals did Katie see? A duck, a pig, a lion, a shark. Katie saw a shark. Anita and Katie saw real animals in the sky. <clears throat> True, false, or it doesn't say. Did they see any real birds? Or were they seeing clouds that looked like animals. Yes, yeah, so this is false. They were not real. Why do you think Katie couldn't see the duck? Hmm, is it because her eyes don't work very well? She doesn't like ducks? She doesn't know what a duck looks like? Or is it because Katie might have been looking for a real duck flying in the sky? But Anita was imagining when she looked at the shapes made by the moving clouds. In fact, there are lots of answers here. Perhaps the cloud didn't look anything like a duck. And two people just have two different imaginations. How many animals did both Katie and Anita see? Look here. Just the one. Just the shark. Are the animals in the story real? 
Are any of them real? No, not the ones they had already seen and probably not the next ones they were about to see. They were looking up at a blue sky with lots of clouds that change shape and the girls just used their imaginations. Still a pretty perfect day to spend with a friend. A monster from long ago. What do you think it was? It was bigger than a bus and was as heavy as an elephant. It had a mouth full of teeth and they were as sharp as knives. It was a monster that lived long ago and it was called the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Its name means king of the lizards. Why? This dinosaur had strong legs. It had a thick tail. Its jaw was four feet long. That is as big as a first grader. And it used its huge jaws and teeth to eat other animals. The T-Rex and other dinosaurs died out millions of years ago. And today we learn about them by digging up, cleaning off, and studying their bones. A monster from long ago. Which of the following statements are true of the T-Rex? Bigger than a bus, heavy as an elephant, mouth full of teeth, or all of the above? It's all of them, that's right. The T-Rex was as scary as they come. Okay, let's try more practice with antonyms, the opposite. Light and weak, heavy, strong, blunt and empty, sharp and full, short and long or tall. <laughs> Describe the physical features of a T-Rex. Well, there's lots of help here. Strong legs, thick tail, a four foot long jaw. As heavy as an elephant is an example of a comparison. As a, it was as heavy as an elephant. Can you find two more comparisons from the passage? One thing being looked at in relation to something else. How about here? How about here? Yes, as sharp as knives, as big as a first grader. Have you ever seen a T-Rex? Maybe in a movie, a television show, a book, a drawing, a painting, in a museum, in your nightmares. But you don't have to worry. You will never meet one face to face that's alive. They died out millions of years ago. A hot air balloon. Gabe looked out the window of Grandpa's truck. The park was just ahead. He could see big bright balloons in the distance. Do you see them, Gabe asked, and he pressed his face to the window. Grandpa smiled and said, yes, I can see them. Grandpa found a parking spot and together Grandpa and Gabe walked to the balloons. I like the striped hot air balloon, said Gabe. He pointed to a balloon with red and yellow stripes. It had eyes and a mouth sewn on it. I like the green one, Grandpa said. Gabe had a good day looking at all the balloons. His favorite part was when the balloons flew into the sky. Beautiful imagery. And what is this story about? Gabe, Grandpa, but mostly beautiful, big, bright, hot air balloons. 
which balloon is Gabe's favorite? Well, it's the one with red and yellow stripes. Now, which balloon does grandpa like? It's the green one. And what was Gabe's favorite part of this special day with grandpa? Of course, when the balloons fly and float up into the sky. Have you ever seen a hot air balloon? I've never been in one and I've seen pictures and videos. And I have memories of a child of watching advertisements on hot air balloons, but I've never seen some of the beautiful ones like they were described in this story. Maybe one day. School carnival. Today is a fun day. We will have a school carnival. Miss Tate is our teacher. She gives each student a ticket. We can use the ticket to ride all the rides. And we can use the ticket to play all the games. My first ride is the bumper cars. Bump, bump, bump. And my next ride is the spinning swings. Whee! Now I play a game. I like to throw the ball and knock over the bottles. I always beat that game. A breeze blows past and I smell the air. Something smells yummy. I almost forgot the other thing we can use our ticket to do. We can buy snacks. I use my ticket to buy popcorn. I love the school carnival. Who is the teacher and what does she give the students? The teacher's name is Miss Tate and she gives each student a ticket for the carnival. <clears throat> the things the ticket in the story can be used for A, B, C, or D, rides, games, snacks, or all of them. Which one would you prefer? Thankfully, you don't have to decide because it is A, B, and C. So you must choose D, all the above. What does the character in the story eat? This character eats popcorn, one of the best carnival snacks there is. Sequence the events in the story. Throwing the ball and knocking the bottle, spinning swings, bumper car rides, and buying popcorn. We need one, two, three, four. Well, there's one. Here's two. Here's three. And at the very end, we have four. Have you ever been to a carnival? And what is your favorite ride or game? Yes, I have been to many carnivals of different sizes in many different countries. I don't like the roller coasters. They scare me. I like the spinning swings. I also like to play the games and of course eating the giant jumbo hot dogs. How about you? Treasure hunt. I love to hunt for treasure. Today, my mom is sending me on a treasure hunt. She made me a map. She made me some clues. If I follow the map and the clues, I will find the treasure. So first, I look in the living room and I find my first clue under the pillow. It tells me to <laughs> sniff the air and I sniff. <laughs> Yummy, the air smells like something good. Next, I follow the map to the kitchen and I find a clue on a cup. It tells me to bring it along. Last, I follow the map to the dining room. And my mom is at the table with cookies and milk. 
a yummy treasure. Oh, all good treasure hunts should end with a snack. And it's even better if the treasure is the snack. Just like a dog, this story teaches us to follow our nose. What does the child do to find the treasure? You can find it right here. You must follow the map and the clues and together it will lead you to the treasure. What does the first clue say? There is more than one. The first clue says to sniff the air. How about the next clue, the second clue? Well, that one says to take along the cup. Interesting. Delicious smell in the air, a cup to take along. What in fact are these yummy treasures? It's cookies and milk. Doesn't get much better than that. Now, have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Well, maybe it wasn't for cookies and milk. In fact, if you ever wake up on Christmas morning with presents under the tree, that's almost like a treasure hunt, running down the stairs from your bedroom and ripping open all those gifts. What about in school? Did you ever get to make a map and follow your partner's directions? If no, lucky you, because now you can do it with your friends for the first time. Don't make the clues too difficult and help your friends if they need and make sure the treasure is something special. Planting a seed. Take a look at the diagram from seeds to plants. Start from the left and move to the right. You can see the two things that plants need to grow when they're in soil, the sun and water. The soil is kind of like their home and they need it to grow their roots. So you have the seed, the roots, the seedling, the stems, the leaves, and of course the beautiful flowers. This is the life cycle of a plant. Kip put on his old pants. He tied his old shoes. He ran outside. Grandpa waited in the yard. Grandpa had a small shovel. He had a can of water and a pack of seeds. Grandpa and Kip sat in the grass. They used the small shovel. They dug small holes in the grass. Kip put one seed in each hole. Then they covered up the holes with dirt. Next, they poured water on the dirt. The dirt, water, and sunshine would help the seeds grow. So before we finish, we have a boy that is getting ready to go outside where his grandfather is waiting for him with some seeds. And then they begin to plant together. In the end, Kip was glad when the seeds grew. He put in all that work, he waited all that time, and now he had big, beautiful, bright flowers. Which of the items did grandpa not have? The shovel, a can of water, gloves, a pack of seeds. So you can find out what grandpa did have and then you know what he didn't have. So shovel, water, seeds, shovel, water, seeds. He did not have gloves. That is called process by elimination. What did grandpa and Kip do with the shovel? Bonk each other on the head? Never. We use shovels to dig, to dig holes. In this case, to plant the seeds. What helps the seed grow? The dirt, water, and sunshine help the seeds grow. I'm small, I'm round. People plant me and enjoy when I grow into a beautiful flower. What am I? 
Okay, so this is the object speaking. It has been personified. Don't let this confuse you either. Think of any of the objects that we have read about in our passage. Think about the plant life cycle in the photo. It's not a person talking. What is small and round? What gets planted? And what grows into a beautiful flower? That is the seed, right? It's small and round, but with lots of love, it becomes the flower. Emma reads a book. Emma liked books. She liked to cuddle with mom on the couch. Mom would read the books. They would eat popcorn. They would laugh and pretend. Sounds pretty great. But today it was Emma's turn to read a book and Emma was scared. What if she forgot the words? <laughs> Do you get stage fright? It's very normal. This book was about a dog. <clears throat> the dog chased a ball. But did the dog catch the ball? Yes, it did. And Emma did a great job. And mom gave her popcorn. And mom also gave her a special treat, a cookie. Popcorn and a cookie, ooh-wee, delicious. Emma asked if she could read a book each day and mom liked that plan. Although, do you think she'll get popcorn and cookies every day? That's hard to say. Now, what would Emma and mom eat while reading? It's right here, that's popcorn. Can you sort these words, dog, Emma, cookie, mom, and popcorn into the three groups, people, animals, and food? Sometimes we get confused when there's too much information. Oh, there's five words to sort and there's three categories. Take a breath and just take one at a time. So, dog, people, same, no, dog, animals, same, yes, okay, now you can do the people, who are the people here, dog, no, Emma, yes, cookie, people, no, mom, Yes. Animals, dog, Emma, cookie, mom, popcorn? No, leave it blank. Food, cookie, and popcorn. You're done. What's the book about? A fairy, a cat, or a dog? This book is about a dog. What did mom treat Emma to? Mom gave her a special treat and it was a cookie. I like peanut butter chocolate chip. And what plan did they make? Emma asked if she could read a book each day and mom agreed. So that's their deal, huzzah. Look and see in the woods. What is under the leaves? I will dig and see. There is a toad under the leaves and there are spiders under the leaves. There is a worm under the leaves. Wait, this is not a worm. It's just my shoelace. What is under a log? I will roll and see. There is a worm under this log and there is a beetle under this log. And there is a button under this log. But wait, this is not a button. It is a snail. And finally, what is under a rock? I will lift it and see. There was a seed under this rock. There are ants under this rock. There are legs under this rock. Wait, this is not even a rock. This is a turtle. 
Which of these is not found under the leaves? Toads, spiders, worms, or shoelaces? Now here's the paragraph about leaves. I can see the word toad, spider, worm, and shoelace. Hmm. Ah, but this is not a worm. It is a shoelace. So C is our answer. What does the snail look like? <clears throat> what is not under the log? That's the button, right? This is not a worm, it's a shoelace. This is not a button, it's a snail. The snail looks like the button. Where is the worm found? The worm is found under the log. Did the rock have legs? Do rocks have legs? No, because it's not a rock, it's a turtle. And finally, write the plurals of the given nouns. So one leaf, one worm, one beetle, one rock, one turtle, one spider, 10 of everything, leaves, 10 rocks, 10 worms, 10 turtles, 10 beetles, and 10 spiders. So usually we just add S, but be careful with leaf into leaves. And that's it for me, Teacher Stefan. Thank you very much. I'll see you again very soon. Sissy, bye-bye.